Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How you doing? You all fine? All sweet. Nice to see you. My name is Nick Vujicic, and it's a pleasure to be with you. Um, I have a wheelchair over there. It's my BMW 7 Series. Uh, I'm going to take it to pimp my ride and get some spinning rims on it. And, uh, you know, those fully pimped cars, you know, with hydraulics and stuff. Uh, you know how they bounce around and stuff? I want to get my wheelchair bouncing. <laughs> like, if I can cross the road and go, bom, bom, bom. <laughs> It's really cool driving that thing around. I have no arms and no legs, and I was actually born this way. And there's no medical reason why this had happened. So I have no limbs, but I have my little chicken drumstick. <laughs> and uh, we call this a chicken drumstick because first of all, it looks like one. And second of all, sometimes my dog thinks it's one. And uh, I tell you, man, it's so funny. He comes up to start biting on it and I have to push him in the head a couple of times. <laughs> it's nuts, man. It's so cool, man. I, I, I love to swim as well. And uh, I actually float like a life jacket. I float upright like this. And then I have my little motor down here and I go, bah, like this, right? And it's so funny when people see me for the first time. It's so cool. You're like, kids freak out. You know what I'm saying? Um, I tell you, this little boy came up to me and he goes, what happened? <laughs> and I went up to him and I go, cigarettes. And uh, <laughs> there was this one girl who saw me and she goes, mommy, look, it's an alien. <laughs> so I went up to her and I went, Rah! you know, she's like, ah, you know, I'm running after her saying, I'm going to eat you, you know, <laughs> freaking her out. So with my little foot, I can also write, this is my pen here, and actually, I can actually write uh, and type with my foot, but I've learned how to draw and all this sort of thing, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I've learned how to type 43 words a minute on a normal computer, and uh, sort of like a heel and toe, heel and toe combination, and uh, I'm learning sign language with my foot. I'm learning it, ready? Peace. Is that cool? Very cool. Anyway, look, we're going to have some fun today, and uh, I, I want, I'm just going to tell you the funniest story of all. It was so funny. I was in a car one day, and when you see me from the outside of the car, you have no idea that I have no arms and no legs, right? You just see my gorgeous face. And we're at the traffic lights one day, and this car comes up next to us, and this girl's looking at me, and I'm like, cool, let's have some fun here. So I know she has no clue that I have no limbs. And so I look at her and I grab the seatbelt in my mouth and I loosen it like this. And then in the car seat, I just did this. <laughs> and she was like, <laughs> she's like, you're freaking me out, man. It's very cool. Anyway, I have a couple of things to show you. I, I play drums. Do you believe me? I actually play drums. I get the drumsticks in my teeth. I'm just joking. No, look, I, uh, I have a drum machine up here. And uh, we're just going to... So what it is, basically, it's a, it's a pad, right? And there's like 16 buttons. And so each button represents a sound, right? So I'm not pressing play or anything like that, right? You see my foot? All right? It's like, like serious, okay? You like that? Well then... So that's sort of more like you're rocking, you know, sort of pop, whatever, but then you got the... The ah-ah. Uh, uh. Can we have some more volume, please? Give me some ah-ah uh, uh, juice, right? Alright, so here we go, right? So it's like... You like that? That would be really cool if I could get this on my wheelchair and play it while I'm driving. And get some techno going like, here we go. One, two, three, four. Yeah. There you go. You like that? Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Beautiful. So I have a tennis ball here and I just want to show you how far I can kick this thing. And a lot of people are like freaking out. You know, how can you do that? And I just want to show you, it's really, really cool. Can I have a volunteer please to catch a ball for me? Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Sure, I'll, I'll get you. How you doing? Yeah, see my finger pointing at you? Stand up. How you doing? Beautiful. What's your name? Jake. What is it? Jake. Jake. Nice to meet you, Jake. Now, can I get you to do me a favor and probably just go up that way? See my finger pointing that way? Just up that way a little bit. Can you guys make a little bit of a path for him to go in amongst the crowd a little bit? Beautiful. Now, just face me, Jake. Now, I just want to show everybody how far I can actually boot this thing. Um, I'm a big fan of David Beckham. I love David Beckham. I love it how he curves that ball. And so I'm practicing, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna, just going to maybe just to get you to move back. Keep on moving back. Keep on back, 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 back. Keep on back, 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 back. I'm joking, bro. I can't kick that far. Come forward. It's all good. I'm just joking. All right, right there is good. Right there is good. Now... That's a pretty big kick, so I'm going to take a little bit of a run-up here. So, uh, let me just... Just... Uh. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> just... Uh. I was just thinking it's all good. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to see if I get you scared a little bit. All right, here we go. Are you ready, mate? Now, when you get this ball, don't throw it back because I can't catch. You understand me? All right, you ready? Here we go. When you get this ball, just come up here on stage. Is that cool? Ready? One, two. Look at that. Jump up, mate, on this side. Beautiful. Now, Jake, hey, you having a good day today? Yeah. That's good. I'll get you to hold that for me. Beautiful. Now, wait, wait, wait. I'm not done with you yet, bro. All right? <laughs> so I'll just get you to stand there, face the crowd. So um, anything new happen in your life today? School? How school? Boring? Learn anything? No? Just call this something? Yeah, cool. Did your homework? No? All right, cool. All right, so here we go. So I want to, uh, I want to just be real with you. Uh, there's a cool game I want to play with you, if that's cool. Um, I'm going to get your right hand on the table, all right? That's a cool ring. Uh, you got to get me one of those. Get a toe ring, you know what I mean? <laughs> one day I'm going to get a wristwatch too. Anyway, um, just put the whole hand on here. Beautiful. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to play a game called Slappers, okay? Now... I don't know if you know what this game is, but basically, I'm going to slap you, okay? And if you, when I go like this, you've got to move out of the way before I get you. So it's a race between your hand and the chicken drumstick, all right? <laughs> so what's going to happen is you've got five shots, okay? And if I miss you once out of the five, you win. Does that make sense? You only got to beat me once to win, okay? You ready? You, you said you were having a good day today, yeah? Yeah, that's good. It's going to change. Okay? No, is it. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, ready? Are you scared? You're not scared. Oh, oh, oh. All right. <laughs> All right, ready? Number one. So when I go like this, you go like... Exactly. Okay? You've got to be quick, though. Okay, ready? Number one. Okay. All right. This is number one. Number two. All right, number three, I'll make it easier for you. I'll even look away, and I'll close my eyes, okay? Now, is his hand still there? I've done this a couple of times, so you can't cheat on me, all right? Now, close my eyes. Your hand's there. Is his hand there? All right, you ready? All right, number four. Give me a hug, man. I love you. Give me a round of applause, guys. Thanks so much, Jake. All right, real quick, I've got a, I've got a phone up here. It's not my cell phone, but uh, it's a normal phone. I just ripped it off the wall. Uh, I'm going to actually show you how I can actually flick this phone onto my shoulder. It's very cool. So... Um, it, 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 it's, it's actually not always guaranteed that it's going to happen the first time. So what happens when you fail? Very good, very good. So uh, can someone give me a sound for ringing phone, please? Thank you, thank you. I'm coming! Ready? <laughs> hey, is that cool? 
Awesome. I want to talk about like when I started, you know, going to school and stuff, a lot of people put me down. You know what I mean? Like people tease each other. I mean, people come up and say, hey, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat. You know, you lose some weight and you're like, you go home and you look at yourself in the mirror and go, I'm fat, right? And so many people tease each other. Oh, you know, you're too short, you're too tall, you look whatever. Uh, different hair and all that. It doesn't matter. See, the thing is, uh, when you're in school, when you're growing up in life, it actually sort of matters to people how you look. And then it matters to you because it matters to others. Why? Why does it matter how you look? Because if they don't like you, then who will? If they don't accept you, then who will? And the fear that we have is that we're going to be alone. That we're not good enough. And, you know, we have to change ourselves. And, you know, so many people put me down and say, Nick, you look too weird and no one's really your friend and you can't do this and you can't do that. And I couldn't change anything. It's not like just fixing my hair one day and everything's fine. It's not like, you know, just whatever. I couldn't change my circumstance. I couldn't just one day wake up and say, hey, give me arms and legs. I need arms and legs. You know what I mean? Like, I went to a bodybuilder, you know, and said, can you make me some arms and legs? No, I'm joking. <laughs> bodybuilder, you get it? <laughs> right? So this is the thing. You know, I go up to people, can you give me a hand? You know, I'm just joking. Yeah. But it was so hard because people put me down. And I started believing that I was not good enough. I started believing that I was a failure. That I'd never ever be somebody who people would like or people would accept. And it was so hard, man. I thought to myself, I, you know, I can't go on, the, go on the soccer field like everybody else, and I can't ride my bike, and I can't skateboard, and all these sort of things. And I started getting depressed. I thought, what kind of purpose do I have to live? I mean, do you, are, are you just here to live to die? I mean, is there not a purpose for me? Is there not a purpose in life? And I had questions and no answers. And I asked my mom and dad, why did this happen? I asked doctors, why did this happen? And they, they don't know. There are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you've got to live with. The choice that we have, though, is either to give up or keep on going. I want to ask you, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe in yourself? Are you going to believe everybody else's judgment on you? Are you going to believe people when they say that you're a failure or no one really likes you, no one really cares about you? And it's not really to say that, hey, you need someone to come up and say, hey, really, I, I like you, I care about you. No, it's not that, but it's the fact that people put you down. People don't even look you in the eye. People ask you how you are, and you say fine, but you're not fine, and they'll, know, they'll never know that. I tell you, life is interesting. Life's a journey. See this phone here? Let's say that I want to go to the phone, right? And I start from over here. Now, to get to the phone... It's not like I'm going to start meditating and going hum, right, and float across the air, right? It's not going to, it's not going to work. It's not like I'm going to go hum and woo, you know, it's not going to work. So I have to take one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. You can only take one step at a time. I don't care how big your step is, it's only one step at a time. You can't do two steps in one. You understand? So it's like one step at a time and... You take steps in this direction, you take steps in that direction, sort of get lost along the way, and sometimes you fall down. Now, to illustrate my point, I'm going to jump off the table, do a back twist, and land on the floor. Okay? Is that cool? Are you ready? Oh, there's a clock there. Okay, can you move the clock for a second, please? Beautiful, beautiful. All right. You ready? So, uh, are you guys ready? Just let me know when you're ready. Are you ready? Okay, ready? One... Two, I'm joking, man. Are you serious? <laughs> Just put the clock back there. If I did that, I'll break my arm or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> but honestly, along the way, you might fall down like this. Ready? <whistles> right? <laughs> Hello! Right? So what do you do when you fall down? Get back up. Everybody knows to get back up because if I start walking, I'm not going to get anywhere. But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. You, so, you so, sort of put a mask on your face when you come to school and pretend that everything's okay when it's not. And you go home and lay in your bed 
when no one's looking at you, when you don't have to impress anybody, and you're yourself. And fear comes in. You know the fear that you have as soon as you walk into the doors of your house. Maybe there's a broken home. Maybe you have doubt in your life. Maybe you don't know for sure what's going to be happening in the future and it scares you. Maybe you're, about, maybe you're worried about what people think of you, what people say about you. Just that fear paralyzes you. And I just want to ask you today, do you think you have hope? Because I tell you, I'm down here, face down, and I have no arms, no legs. It should be impossible for me to get back up. I mean, you go home and tie the legs and arms of your brothers and, and sisters and, and like push them down <laughs> and see how long it's going to take them to get back up. You know what I mean? You know, you can tell them that you'll see them tomorrow. You know what I mean? But this is the thing. It should be impossible for me to get back up, but it's not. You see, I will try 100 times to get up, and if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. But if I fail, I try again and again and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. Does that make sense? And it's not the end until you've given up. And just the fact that you're here should persuade you that you have another chance to get back up. There's still hope. I'm not here today to tell you that I understand your pain. I don't know how it feels to be abused. I don't know how it feels to feel, quote, fat and you've got an eating disorder. I don't know how it feels to have a broken home. I don't know how it feels. But I know how it feels to have a broken heart. And I know how it feels to be alone. And I want you to know that I found my strength in Jesus Christ and you're going to find your strength in whatever you find it in. But I just want you to know that it's not the end. It matters how you're going to finish. Are you going to finish strong? And you will find that strength to get back up like this. How did I get from depressed to who I am today? Because I tell you, I was depressed. When I was age eight, I used to concentrate on the things I didn't have. I wish I had arms and legs, and I wish I could do this, but what can I do? You see, I have a choice, and that's what I want to talk about today, choices. I can either be angry for not having arms and legs or be thankful for my chicken drumstick. <laughs> and you see, I can still do a lot of things. At home, I can brush my teeth, comb my hair, get myself ready in the morning, and I'm traveling around the world. It, it's, it's amazing. But I had to ask myself a couple questions. And the first question was really, who am I? Who am I? I'm Nick Vujicic, but who is that? And it's funny how the friends around you sort of determine who you are. You change yourself. You come to school. And everybody swore around me at high school, so I started swearing. Why? Because it's the cool thing to do. Everybody swears. So I don't want to be left out. And I want to be accepted, so I started swearing. You go to a party, everybody's drinking, so you drink. Why? Well, everybody else around me is doing a big deal. And you start losing yourself, and you start putting your security in temporary things. You start putting your happiness in things that won't last. You can get drunk all you like, but in the morning, you're going to be sober with a headache with the same problems. You want to be high the rest of your life on drugs? Everybody say, don't do drugs, don't do drugs. Well, why? Why do we even go there? It's either out of curiosity, peer pressure, or trying to escape reality. Basically, three things. That's why we go to drugs, sex, alcohol. Why do you do it? Because it feels good. Okay, that's how we're doing it. I mean, if you want something, you go get it. You want to buy something, you save up money, you go get it. Why? Because that will make you happy. And we take these steps in the wrong direction that will actually take you away from your dreams. Oh, don't worry, Nick. Drugs and alcohol won't take me away from my dreams and my purpose and sex and all that. No. 
But I tell you, it actually will. Because you go to a level of drinking and you go to a level of drugs and it's not enough. You'll find that out. And then you try something new. And then you'll also go to school and people will put you down. And parents will tell you that you're a failure because you failed at a test. And you start believing the lies around you, saying that you're not good enough and no one's going to want you, and you'll never ever do anything good in your life, and you'll never ever you know, achieve, the, achieve the dreams and goals that you wish you had done, or wish that you could do. And these steps take you closer. That voice saying, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, and all you need is one more step to fall. See, so you have a choice to know which step you're going to take today. Let me ask you, do you know who you are? You want to know who I think you are? You care about what your friends think who you are. You, know, you care about their opinion. You want to know who I am? You want to know what I think you are? I'll tell you right now. I don't care how you look. Honestly, if you're 400 kilos, I'm going to come up to you and give you a hug and say that I love you. I don't care if you're fat, short, tall, thin. What? I don't care, man. I really don't care how you look. I don't care what you're good at. I don't care what you're not good at. I don't care if you like rock and roll music or not. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if you're a good mathematician or a good athletic or not good at anything that you think. But I'm going to come and tell you that you're awesome just the way you are. I know so many teenagers who look themselves in the mirror and wish that they had a different body. Girls, you're beautiful just the way you are. You're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. Just, I love you just the way you are. And you boys, you're the man. <laughs> because it's not how you look. When you see me for the first time, many of you felt sorry for me. Do you feel sorry for me anymore? No. Why? Because you know who I am. But don't you remember I have no arms and no legs? Would you want to be my friend? Of course you would. Why? Because you like who I am. But I have no arms and no legs. And you're going to say, so what? So when you say, well, I have this or I don't have that, I'm going to go, so what? I don't care. You are worth more than diamonds. All the diamonds in the world, you are so precious. Every single one of your hearts, you can do something. Not just something that you can do, but you can live life. Life is not always good. Life is always not rosy. But life is worth living when you find purpose. Nick, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know. My parents want me to do this. My teachers want me to do that. My friends think that I should do this, and I don't know what to do. And you're torn, man. You don't know what to do. You have to make important decisions, man. You don't know what to do. Who do you believe? You follow your heart. If that's who you want to be, if that's what you want to do in life, then walk to it. One day at a time. That phone might feel so far away. In fact, it might seem impossible for you to reach that. Let's say that phone was all the way at the back of the room. How am I going to get off this table? I can't. How am I going to get there? I can't. But I want you to know that nothing is impossible. And if it is impossible for your dreams to come true, let's say you want to become a pilot and you can't be a pilot for some reason, maybe your eyesight or maybe your height. I know somebody who couldn't be a pilot. They're doing something now that they actually love to do. See, all things come together for the good. That's how it is in my life. You see, there's nothing good about having no arms and no legs, is there? No. If I, you know, click my fingers, metaphorically speaking, and your arms and legs disappeared, do you think you'd be happy with me? No, you'd come run after me and headbutt me, okay? <laughs> because there's nothing good about having no limbs. But I love my life. Do you want to know why? Because I've seen the purpose. Because I have no arms and no legs, you're all listening to what I have to say. This is maybe the most attentive you've been in any guest speaker. Because everybody else is boring and what would they know anyway? That's what you think. 
Don't worry, I was at school too. Like, what do you know? I don't care what many people have to say. They have no idea what I'm going through. What pain do they know? But you see me and you see what sort of pain I could go through and what I've gone through. And all of a sudden now, I'm seeing all of you and maybe for the first time, you're believing these words out of my mouth saying, I love you. And you don't even know me, but you actually believe that I do love you. You see, it's an unconditional love. You don't have to do anything for me to love you. I just love you. Why? I don't know. Because I just love you. Why? It's love. It's unconditional love. Not only is it about you and your life, but what about the people around you? You know, if, if you think that you have no purpose, Nick, I don't know what I want to do. You know, I wish I could do this, but I don't think this is going to happen in my life. Let me tell you this. So many people came up to me and said, Nick, I don't have a purpose. I don't know what to do in my life. Let me ask you one thing. If you went through your life full of pain, full of tears, and at the end of your life, you actually saved somebody's life, is your life worth living? Is the pain worth someone's life? If you could actually save somebody? Can you imagine? If you actually saw somebody nearly get run over a car, you dive and get them out of the way of the car, for instance, an example, would that be worth living? You save somebody's life. I don't know. What about this? Let's say that you have a problem in your life and you want to give up now. Imagine if someone 10 years older who's gone through the exact same thing that you have actually got through it and came to you and said, you know what, I know how it feels. I've been there. I've been going through what you're going through now, but I'm still here. Would that not encourage you? Could that possibly save your life? Yes. Is that not a purpose worth living for? And that's why I believe in you, because that is the greatest purpose. It's to love. Honest. It's to, it sounds corny, whatever you want to say, I don't care. I love people because there is freedom and power in loving people. You have a choice every day you come to school to either tease somebody, gossip about somebody, or you can go up to them and encourage them. You can go up to somebody and say, hey, you're looking good today. When you ask them how you're doing and they say, okay, and you know they're not okay, you can say, no, really, how are you doing? You could save somebody's life. Oh, really, Nick? No, I don't think so. Check this out. I was six years old, grade one. Twelve people teased me. I counted them all on my fingers. <laughs> Twelve people teased me. And at the end of the day, ten to three, in the afternoon, I said, I can't do this. If one more person teases me today, that's it. I'm going to give up. And I'm driving in my wheelchair, my BMW 7 Series to my, to my parents, right? And there is this one girl who yells out, Hey, Nick! And I'm thinking, great, here it is. She comes to me and she says, Nick, I just want you to know that you're looking good today. And I'm like, oh. The power of encouragement. You can save a person's life. Because I tell you, I was walking, man, this way. You're not good enough. People telling me, no one loves you. you don't, there's nothing good in your life. You can't do this. You can't do that. No one's going to want to marry you and all these sort of things and get to the edge. And all I needed was that one more person to tell me that I wasn't good enough. And I'll be down there. Do you know that you could be that one person for somebody else to push them over? You don't know how many people have eating disorders in this school. You don't know how many people want to hurt themselves in this school. They hide it. You don't know how many people hate their life. And you're one of the reasons why. Can you imagine that? Serious. Why? Just because you want to have fun. Grow up. Grow up. I dare this school not to tease another person for the rest of the day. I dare you. I dare you. 
Do you think it's possible? People say, well, I won't do it, but everybody else will. Be the change you want to see. And you be that person and turn them around. This school should have every person having a friend. You see somebody having no friends, why don't you go up to that person and be their friend? Because you're scared of what people think of you. Let's do it. Let's wake up. Embrace it, man. Let's live. I love my life. Nothing stopped me. Am, am I happy all the time? No. No, I'm not happy all the time. I'm not happy. I cry sometimes. Not because of no arms, no legs. This is easy. I'm talking about the things in life that I, I that other things, man. I'm like stressed about and anxious about it. The, the person that I love, they're hurting and I can't do anything about that. that that's what kills me. We're all going through something. We're all trying to find that something, that happiness. And you can find it. Because I found it. Check this out. You need to learn something. Do you know for you to learn something, it was actually learned by somebody else? And anything that anybody else learns, you can actually learn. Makes sense, right? How do you know this is black? Because someone taught you it was black. Why? Because someone learned that this was black. And you were able to learn that this was black by someone teaching you. Nothing's really beyond your reach. You understand what I'm saying? But we're not all good at math. We're not all good at athletics. We're not all good at, you know, maybe telling colors. Big deal. Find what you love to do. I love loving people, man. I love encouraging people. That's the greatest thing. The greatest business in the world. Saving people's lives. Love it. But we're not all going to be speakers. We're not all going to be doing something. That'd be crazy. What do you want to do in your life? Is there something more to your life? Because I found something more to my life and I believe it's God and you're on your own journey. It's fine. I love you guys so much. I love you very much. Choices are yours. I made a choice to keep my virginity until I'm married. Could it's proof beyond words that my wife was worth waiting for. Do we make wrong choices? Yes, we do. Are there consequences for bad choices? Yes, there are. And I can talk another half an hour on consequences on drug, sex, and alcohol, but I'm not here to lecture you. I'm not here to say not to do drugs and not to do all that stuff. Look, But don't believe that you know everything either. What, won't, what I don't know won't kill me, right? That's what they say, right? That is stupid. <laughs> how dumb's that? Let's say I've got a brain tumor and I don't know it. Is that going to kill me still? Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Idiot. Of course. Look at me and my life. I've made choices and this is how I am. This is where I am. And I love it. You know what's cool? Sorry. Just getting a seat organized. <laughs> That's better. Put my feet up, you know. <laughs> I want to talk about my wife. I'm not married. I don't know who my wife is yet. Right? It's okay. I know she's coming. It's fine. She's coming. Just because you have no boyfriend, girls, it doesn't mean you're not beautiful and that you're not loved. You don't need a boyfriend. You don't need to use your body as security to make you feel that someone needs you. My wife is coming. And I may not have hands to hold my wife's hand, but I don't need hands to hold her heart. And that's all I want to hold. I'll tell you, a real man would wait. A real man would not put your life in danger if you're not 100% sure that you're going to be with, together for the rest of your life. That's why I haven't had sex because I don't know who I'm going to marry yet. Why sleep around with everybody else? It's so silly. 
Why? Just for temporary pleasure? No, man. It's beautiful to know I've only shared that with my girl. My girl. And I'm her guy. I love that. We're going to have children together. I know that. And how am I going to hug my children when they're crying? I used to get depressed over that. What kind of a father am I going to be? Check this out. There was a girl. She's so cute, man. You know, one of my friend's daughters, and she was, you know, two and a half years old. She had this pink flowery hat on, pink shoes on. She was about my height as well. And she came and she was hugging everybody goodbye at this family function. And she comes to me, and she, I'm sitting on the floor, and she's just looking at me, and I'm like, cool. She's just staring at me. I'm like, okay, what can a two and a half year old honestly be thinking about? Like, this is so weird. And she was looking at me for about 25 seconds, and then she realizes something. Like this little light, bing, you know, came to it. And she realized that I had no hands to hug, so when she came up to me to hug me, she put her hands behind her back. And she hugged me with her neck. I know. Isn't that more beautiful? It's so beautiful. Why am I here? To tell you this, that I love you. That everything's going to be okay. Not today. Not, not to say that I am going to be with you every day <laughs> to tell you that. Not to say that I understand what you're going through, but today I've come here so you would remember my smile. And you'd remember what I said. That you have a choice to either uplift somebody or put someone down. You either have the choice to step towards your goals and dreams or step away going into temporary things. You have a choice to either give up or keep going. Give up or get up. When you fail, try again and again and again. I want you to close your eyes, please. If you don't want to close your eyes, that's fine. Just stare at the floor. Don't talk to the person next to you, please. I want to ask you, how are you? What heaviness are you carrying? What tears do you hold back? What pain, what fears are kept inside? You don't have to hold on to those fears. You just take one step at a time. Not to say that one day these fears are just going to completely disappear, but can you forgive those who've hurt you? Because that's when healing starts. Every time someone puts you down, will you make a decision to bring somebody else up? Picture yourself in an open area. There's no buildings and there's no shelter. And there's a storm above you. And this storm represents the situations in your life. And you don't tell anybody what you're going through because first of all, they wouldn't understand. And second of all, they can't even help you anyway. You're in this storm and you're down on your knees and you're cold and you're weak and you feel like this is the end. Are you not still here? You are still here. You don't have to do this alone. You can talk to counselors. You can talk to people you trust. And you're going to talk to whoever you talk to, but I talk to Jesus. But hold on to that person who you think might help you 
and imagine them right now saying that they can't stop the storm right now, but they will hold you and keep you warm until the storm passes. Because when they hold you, the storm's still there, but it's okay. Because they're with you all the way. Think of your friends. You look them in the eye and you know maybe that they're, they're not really that happy. You go to parties and you just look them in the eye. And you know that they're hurting as well. Everybody's trying to cover up. Can you lift somebody today? Make the choice today to do something good. Hold on to that hope. Open your eyes. Look at me. Tears clean the windows of your soul. That's why you feel good after crying. And I'm here today to hug you. I'm a hugging machine. And if you want a hug, I'm going to, in a couple minutes, get up off this. I'm going to go to a table to the side. There's a table around the corner behind this camera. And I want to hug you. And I want you to hug me like you've never hugged before. Because there is healing in hugging. And I want you to know that I love you guys so much. Don't give up. And know that there is someone always out there who believes in you, who loves you just the way you are. This is exactly what this school needed because teenagers at this point in their life, they go through trying to find out who they are and you never really get to find it out with other people. People can't tell you who you are. You've got to find it for yourself and you've got to be able to respect yourself and learn to love yourself before you can change your environment and that's really been helpful with what Nick said. It's just, it's told kids that it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter what what you smell like, it doesn't matter what, what colour eyes you have or what, if you have braces or anything, it just matters who you are on the inside and that person is who everybody should be seeing and if they're not seeing it then you shouldn't, you should be looking for someone else, you should be looking for someone who does see who you are on the inside <laughs> and who does love you. for giving me this opportunity to speak into your life and share with you my story. I hope you've been challenged and inspired to never give up and I believe that you have been touched. I'd love to hear from you. Write to me. Go on my website attitudeisaltitude.com. I enjoy reading so many people's testimonials on how my life has impacted theirs. So please write to me or email me 
Also want you to know that there is a book coming and a series of DVDs, so be on the lookout for that. If you see me on the street face to face, make sure you come up and say hello, give me a hug, I'd love to meet you. Remember, there is always hope, never give up.